10 Minute Jazz Us and Podcast, episode 421. Hey, everybody, welcome back to episode 421 of the 10 Minute Jazz Lesson Podcast. So, we're going to finish up our series on the five to one progression this week. Got some good stuff for you in terms of a new exercise, but then we'll also talk about sort of how you can sustain this practice and what I do uh, to make sure that I'm kind of working on this um, on a regular basis. I wouldn't say I work on this like every single day for years and years and years, but I do always come back to this practice of my tension and release work, right? My cadence work cadential work. I don't know how to say it, Uh, but I always come back to it because it really is just one of those skills that is always going to pay off no matter what level you're at. Because as you get up there in level, you're still going to be dealing with the five to one progression. You're just simply going to be using more and more sophisticated sounds. So I think this will be a practice that you'll basically always come back to. Okay, so first things first, let's talk about the new and sort of final exercise that I'm going to show to you today, which is one of my absolute favorite things to play over. It's so interesting and fun and gives a really, really good workout. Okay, so last week we talked about this cool exercise that was going to get us around the entire circle of fourths in major, right? And what we were doing was we were simply playing five to one, five to one, and then we were turning that one chord into the five of the next chord. And we're simply just going around the circle of force that way. Now, that's a fantastic exercise and it gets us through all 12 keys, which is awesome. But it's only major and there's a lot we're sort of leaving on the table there, if that makes sense. Because you know what we haven't talked about this month that we're finally going to get to is five to one in a minor key. Right. And this exercise that I'm about to show you, it's really, really awesome because it combines five to one in major and five to one in minor. And it does so in a way that kind of makes sense. So if you're a Patreon member, go ahead and grab your PDF this week and you're going to have a PDF with these two little chord progressions on it. Okay, look at the first one, because that's how we're going to uh get this situated in our minds and and understand the moving parts of this, okay? So what you'll notice first on the sheet is a concert F7 chord that goes to a B-flat major 7 chord. Now, we've seen that before like a million times. That's just 5 to 1 in B-flat major. But now you're going to notice that then we go to a concert D7 flat 9 And then we do a concert G minor chord. So what the heck is happening there, right? Well, we see a dominant seventh chord, right? We see a D7 flat nine. That should say in our heads like, oh, maybe, you know what? This might be a five chord, right? Whenever we see a dominant seventh chord, our minds should probably go there first until proven wrong, if that makes sense. But in this case, if we look at the chord after the D7 flat nine, we see a G minor chord. So that is a five to one relationship. D7 flat nine to G minor. All right, so what we have is five to one in B flat. And then five to one in G minor. So why choose that succession of chords? Like why go from B flat major to G minor? Now, I'm sure when I said it out loud, a lot of you probably realized exactly why I would do that. Because G minor is the relative minor key of B flat major. And in fact, a lot of tunes will do this. They'll go from a major key to the relative minor, or they'll go from a minor key to the relative major. So it's just practical. It makes sense. This is actually going to prepare us for a lot of the stuff that we will 
hear and see in a lot of jazz standards, right? So we go five in a major key, five to the relative minor. And then all I'm doing is I'm turning that minor chord into the five of the next major key. So now I'm on G minor. Now I'm going to go to G7, which is going to become the five of C major. And then I'm going up to E7 flat nine, which is going to resolve to A minor, which is the relative minor of C major. A7, D major, F sharp seven flat nine to B minor. Sorry about my terrible piano playing, all right? And in this way, we can actually get through six keys, right? Well, actually 12 keys. We can get through six major keys and six minor keys before we come back around to the top, okay? So we would have to do this in what I like to call two sets uh, in order to cover all 12 major keys and all 12 minor keys. But that's what I've done for you this week. Uh, for the Patreon members, you'll get a worksheet with both progressions, and then you also get a backing track for both progressions. So I love this. Check out how cool it sounds. It's almost like playing a tune, but really we're just working on that five to one relationship. So anytime we can make something that we're working on fun, I'm a huge, huge believer in that being the key to sticking with it, right? And I'm sure as you're listening to that going by, you're maybe even thinking about a couple of tunes that do that. Oh, I know that sound. That's the same as such and such tune. But if you don't know any tunes that do that, that's cool. You'll start seeing them everywhere and hearing them everywhere once you get this sound in your head. All right. So there it is. That's the exercise for this week. But now I just want to wrap up the whole series by talking a little bit about sort of how I work on all this stuff in a way that I think is sort of sustainable. So what we've done is we've done a whole bunch of different things here. We started the month by talking about just taking one single key and practicing the five to one movement over and over and over and over and over again in that key. And that is such, such valuable work, right? It might be the most valuable work to tell you the truth. And then what we did was in the last two episodes, we sort of transitioned into working on a whole bunch of keys in one exercise. So how do we balance that? Well, first of all, let me say that if you really don't feel great about the way you're playing over the five to one progression and you feel like you have a ton of work to do over that, just stick with like one key a day or even one key a week, right? Stick with that for a while. No need to rush through that, okay? But if you're starting to feel pretty good about it, the way that I balance this is usually I pick one key a day and I'll work on that for like, I don't know, 10 minutes. So I'm just staying in that one key and I'm practicing my five to one stuff or a two, five, one or whatever. And I'm really hammering that one key. And then also I'll pick one of these exercises from either last week or this exercise that I just showed you today and I'll spend 10 minutes on that. So it's a nice combination of there being an explicit focus on a particular key, right, on that particular day. And then I'm also exercising the other side of my brain, which is like, hey, let's go through a bunch of keys. And generally, that's how I work on it. So again, if you're not really confident with your abilities, just stick to working on one key a day, nothing else. Maybe, you know, 10, 15, 20 minutes on that just pure five to one uh, practice. Okay. But then if you are somebody that feels confident going through these multi key exercises, the big thing is just don't forget to work on one key at a time for some portion of your practice routine, because that act of repeating the same key over and over and over and over and over again, really forces you to dig deep. You'll get sick of your playing after a while. 
And that's a good thing because that'll force you to kind of step outside of your comfort zone, try to incorporate some new sounds, all that good stuff. Okay, so Patreon members are going to get PDF. Uh, they'll get a backing track. The $5 members will get some trading tracks as usual. Uh, if you're not sure what I'm talking about and you're new to the show, this is a listener supported podcast, which means that we don't do any advertisements or anything like that. We just rely on people like you that are actually getting the benefit out of this to support us and keep us going. And we do that on Patreon. Um, so you can go to our website, 10minutejazzlesson.com, click on one of the Patreon banners or go to patreon.com and search for the 10 Minute Jazz Lesson podcast. You'll find all the information over there on the different levels of support and what you get. And you'll feel great about keeping this jazz education podcast alive. So again, 10minutejazzlesson.com, click on one of the Patreon banners or uh, patreon.com and search for the 10 Minute Jazz Lesson podcast. Thank you to everybody that's over there supporting us. We really couldn't do this show without you. Again, that's the way that we kind of keep things moving. Wanted to give a quick shout out to some new members. Thank you to Bob, Jim, Clemens, Maria, and Constance. Thank you so much for joining up, supporting the show, and keeping us going. And of course, to everybody else over there that's been supporting us for a short time, a long time. Really appreciate it. Couldn't do it without you. All right. Have a great rest of your month, and we'll see you soon with something brand new. Bye, everyone. Bye.